Hey guys, this is Travis over at Social Paintball, and I'm going to be doing the tutorial I've been promising you guys on how to shoot uh, video, uh, specifically paintball, with digital SLR cameras. Now the reason I use the Canons over the Nikons is simply because of all the extra shooting modes that the Canon cameras give you that Nikons don't. And uh, Nikon pretty much gives you 720 24p and that is not ideal for paintball. I prefer to shoot paintball in 720 60p which is 60 frames per second. Um, if you want to slow it down 60 frames per second is going to give you much smoother um, slow motion is going to capture the paintballs better. 24p is really designed for film use. If you're doing documentaries or making a short film or a movie, um, Hollywood shoots basically in 24 frames per second. So that is the main reason I use the Canons is because I like to shoot 60 frames per second. Okay, And the um, Canon cameras will also do 1080 24p and 30p, or most of the Nikons that I'm aware of only shoot 720, 24p. So you can get much higher resolution and the image quality is just phenomenal out of these Canon cameras. Okay, now a lot of you guys have been asking me what camera to get. Okay, well basically let's talk about the two types of digital SRR uh, cameras that you can get. One is a full frame sensor which is extremely expensive and the reason being it costs a lot more money to make a full frame sensor. And the other one is a crop sensor type camera. Now the Canon 7D is the crop sensor and the 5D Mark II um, is the uh, full frame sensor. And then there's even cameras over the 5D Mark II. Um, I'm not going to get into those, but they're very, very expensive. You're going to get up into, you know, three, four, five, six, seven thousand dollars for one of those types of cameras. Uh, the 5D Mark II will run you uh, the, just the body alone is about $2,400 and the Canon 7D, the body will run you about $1,600. Okay. Now, the reason I shoot with the 7D over the T2i or the 60D is the build quality of the 7D. The 7D is a magnesium type body. It's a full, heavy duty, large camera. And I like the way it feels in my hand. And uh, it has the dual digi um, processor in it, so it shoots really really fast if you're going to be taking pictures. Um, I think it's eight frames per second. I don't shoot a lot of pictures obviously I shoot more video but for some of you guys who are going to be taking pictures um, again the the 7D will shoot much faster than the 5D Mark II. Now the 5D Mark II is a 21 megapixel sensor and the Canon 7D is an 18. So what does that mean in video? not really a whole lot because you're not taking full advantage of all the processing power that the, that the sensor has in video. It throws out a lot of data. But it does make a big difference if you're taking pictures. Now, let's talk about some of the other differences between a full frame camera and a crop sensor camera. Now, the full frame will take full uh, wide advantage of your lenses. So if you're shooting, uh, I have a 50 millimeter on this uh, 5D Mark II, it's going to be a, a 50 millimeter image uh, on the sensor. Now if you take that and put it on the 70, which is a crop factor, it actually zooms in somewhat. So it almost makes your 50 millimeter closer to like an 85 or 100. All right, now here we are on the 7D with a 50 millimeter 1.4 wide open. And um, this way I'm going to show you guys um, what a 50 millimeter looks like on a 7D compared to a 5D Mark II in low light. All right, here's the same setting. I'm just using my cell phone to give just a little bit more light. And this is the 50 millimeter on the 5D Mark II, um, wide open at 1.4 at 1600 ISO. Now you can see how much wider this shot is. This is the difference between the full frame sensor and the crop sensor. Now, is that an advantage or a disadvantage? Well, in paintball, it probably is an advantage because it allows you to reach out there and pull that image in a little bit closer. I love it when the guys I'm, I'm filming them and they're running into the frame of the camera and I can get real close on their mask and see the expression on their face. So I love to shoot really, really tight images. And the 7D will certainly help you do that over a 5D Mark II. 
Now, if you're trying to do some really wide shots, um, the 5D Mark II is nice, but keep in mind the 5D Mark II does not have 60 frames per second mode. Only the 7D or the 60D or the T2i. So, you guys, if you're starting out, you're looking for a good camera, it's hard to beat a T2i or a 60D. Now, I don't particularly own those two cameras, so I can't really give you a lot of heads up on them because I really haven't tried them. But there are some advantages on the new 60D. I know it has the LCD screen that flips out. Uh, it's a really, really cool feature, and um, it's supposed to be a really, really nice camera. I've, I've seen reviews on them all, and I think you really can't go wrong with any one of those cameras. Um, all right, let's talk about the different types of lenses that you can use when you're, when you're filming an action-type sport. My primary lens that I use is this lens right here. Now, there's, there's two types of Canon lenses. There is the L-series. The L-series stands for luxury. It is the best, most pristine glass, and that is what I like to shoot with. Obviously, the L-series lenses are very, very expensive. Uh, they're sometimes as much as 10 times that of a normal lens. But the build quality on them is amazing. You can see on the barrel of the lens in your, um, where, you, where you zoom and you focus that big, heavy ring. Um, it's, it's easy to get a hold of. It's easy to use. And it um, is a, a nice feature when you really need to, to focus very quickly. Now, let's back up just a second. Why are we wanting to use digital SLRs over a regular video camera? And here's the reason why. Because of the fact it's that depth of field image that you get shooting with a digital SLR that you just really cannot get shooting with a regular camera. Okay. Now, obviously digital SLRs are harder to use because they are only manual focus in video mode. Now, if you're taking pictures, that thing will be spot on. It will autofocus on a moving subject. But in video, you cannot autofocus. So you really have to practice um, being able to follow your subjects and almost not even think about it to pull that focus and keep it on them. That's why the L-series lenses with the, with the big ring certainly help you do that. Now let's talk about depth of field for a second, though. How do you achieve that? If you look at some of these images I'm about to show, or I have showed you in that video, you'll see that the guys up front might be really in focus and the guys in back are, just have that, that wonderful blur. That is what depth of field. So what causes that? You may ask. You know, you, you've seen some of my footage and maybe you've tried to shoot that way and you can't get that really nice depth of field. So I'm going to tell you what causes uh, depth of field. I'm not going to get into it too specifically. I'm just going to kind of give you it in layman's terms, terms so you'll be able to understand it. It basically boils down to the aperture of the lens that you're shooting. Now, aperture refers to um, the iris inside the camera, uh, how it opens or closes and lets the amount of light in. The larger the aperture, the larger or the, 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 the real thin depth of field that you're going to get. So a, a, a lens that uh, has a much larger aperture is going to give you a much greater depth of field. Now a lot of these kit lenses that you guys are going to be getting with these cameras, the aperture changes as you zoom in. In other words, as you zoom in, that aperture is going to get smaller. So the smaller that aperture gets, the less depth of field you're going to have and everything is going to be in focus. With that being said, the larger the aperture, the harder it is to keep focus because that depth of field is so thin and so shallow, focus is much, much harder to do. Now, I shoot at a 2.8 aperture, which is a wide open lens. That's one of the reasons that this lens is so expensive is, as I zoom in from 70 to 200 millimeters with this lens, it stays open at 2.8. So what that means is it's not going to close down on me as I'm zooming in on my subjects. I'm, going to, I'm able to keep that wonderful depth of field that I'm trying to get that gives you that real cinematic look that you can't get with a regular camera. Um, obviously, when you're shooting wide open like that, the lens is going to allow a lot of light in the camera. So you can, you can really shoot a lot in low light. Um, and you're able to shoot lower ISOs. I recommend you shooting an ISO probably around 
120 to 160 and um, that way you're not going to get a lot of noise in your image and when you're shooting wide open you got plenty of light.